What's going on guys? This is Sam and there's been a lot of Apple news to talk about lately. The iPhone 10 may get discontinued in 2018. We have new information about the iPhone SE 2, Apple's building a new campus, and much more. So let's go ahead and jump in. Saying that Apple could discontinue the iPhone 10 in 2018 sounds crazy if you don't look at any context, but if you think about it this way, KGI Security's Ming-Chi Kuo actually predicts that they will discontinue it for a number of reasons. The biggest reason being that Apple is announcing three new iPhone 10 like devices in 2018 and it wouldn't make that much sense to keep a fourth iPhone 10 like model around if three new versions are coming out. We've talked a little bit in the past about what new iPhone 10 models Apple is planning to introduce. There's going to be a new cheaper 6.1 inch LCD model which doesn't have an OLED display. Then two higher end models with OLED displays, one at 5.8 inches just like the iPhone 10 we have now, and a second plus size model either 6.2, 6.3, or 6.5 inches. 6.5 inches would be absolutely gigantic for the iPhone 10 Plus, but those are Apple's current plans as of January 2018 for the models of iPhone that they plan to announce this year. And now that we're hearing that Apple might discontinue the iPhone 10, I'm starting to wonder even more what they're gonna call these new phones. iPhone 10 squared, iPhone 9, iPhone 11, none of those really click with me. Maybe they'll go with something simpler like the new iPhone, the new iPhone Plus, the smaller, not iPhone or iPhone Plus, which would be the 6.1 inch LCD model. I I'm, I'm really interested to see what Apple's gonna do. Their marketing team is going to have to get insanely creative because they've sort of put themselves in a bind by skipping iPhone 9, jumping the iPhone 10, using the Roman numeral X instead of a 10 in the first place, having something else called the iPhone SE. The product naming conventions are getting more and more complex. So I'm gonna leave a poll up here in the top right hand corner of the screen. I'm always confused which way is left. So I'm just gonna point in both the directions. In in that poll, vote for whatever you think the new iPhones in 2018 will be called, and uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that also down below in the comments section. Apple discontinuing the iPhone 10 could also be a bummer for anybody that wanted to pick up the iPhone 10, like this one next year when it would drop $100 or $200 in price. It doesn't look like you'll be able to do that because Apple isn't just pushing it to the side like they do with the iPhone 7 when the iPhone 8 came out or with the 6S when the 7 came out. You won't even be able to buy this phone anymore. It's just gonna be discontinued completely. It's an interesting idea. KGI Security's Ming-Chi Kuo has an interesting track record. Sometimes he's spot on, sometimes he's completely off. I guess for now, we'll just have to wait and see what happens. Now, moving on to the iPhone SE 2, this is a product that I'm still really excited for. I don't feel a lot of hype around the Apple community in general, but I sincerely liked my iPhone SE 1, and I would love to get my hands on a second generation model. We first heard rumors about a new iPhone SE back this summer, but I thought it was gonna be one of those one-off rumors that never really came true, nothing ever happened with it. But a number of other sources have said, yes, Apple is working to build an iPhone SE 2, and it will be released at some point in 2018 based on what they've done in the past or with the original iPhone SE probably sometime within the next two months within March or April. We've heard about some of the rumored specs from Text24 already, the Apple A10 Fusion processor with two gigabytes of RAM. We've got a 1700 milliamp hour battery. It's gonna be a little bit bigger than on the original iPhone SE and a 12 megapixel rear and five megapixel front facing camera, possibly even a larger screen between four and 4.2 inches. And up until this point, we had not heard anything about the iPhone iPhone SE 2's design. I assumed it would pretty much be the same thing as the original iPhone SE, which was the same as the iPhone 5S. Nothing would really change. But the same site that published those initial specs, Text24, they are now reporting that the iPhone SE 2 could feature a glass back for wireless charging. And if you just look at the rest of Apple's product lineup, that would make a lot of sense. The iPhone 10, the iPhone 8, and the iPhone 8 Plus all have wireless charging. So a new flagship from Apple to not have wireless charging would definitely feel like a step in the wrong direction. Now, personally, wireless charging is not a big deal to me. If it had it on the iPhone SE, if it didn't, it really wouldn't make or break the phone for me. What I do like is glass backs in general. On the iPhone 10, on the iPhone 8, on the iPhone 8 Plus, they all feel super premium. Plus they look really nice and even though they are more prone to breaking than something like an aluminum back and cracking and shattering and being really expensive to fix, I think overall they look a lot nicer and along with them looking nicer, you do get the ability to wireless charge your device, which is pretty cool. The reason I'm a little bit skeptical of these rumors is because I feel like it would be too easy to just say something about a product that hasn't been released and because Text24 doesn't have a track record. We'll have to see what happens in the future, but right now this is all sort of a maybe. So as of right now, we don't know 100% for sure that the iPhone SE 2 is coming, but a product we do know is making its debut in early 2018 is the HomePod. I feel like HomePod is one of the most under-hyped Apple products of all time. They announced it back at WWDC. It was supposed to come out in December, 
And now it's January and I don't see a lot of people talking about it. There's not a lot of threads about it. I think some people are excited about the product. I'm excited about it. But in general, it's not like a new iPhone or a new iPad, new MacBooks, a new iMac. It's a new product entirely. It's very experimental for Apple as a company, but I'm still excited to check it out. And it actually looks like the wait for the HomePod won't be that much longer. The device just received FCC approval in the United States. And according to the Taipei Times, 1 million HomePod units have been shipped to Apple, which is a good sign. That means they are preparing to release the device for sale in the United States um, and probably some other major launch countries as well. It's exciting. It's also very late. This is supposed to come out in December. It's already almost February and we still don't have an official release date for the HomePod, but it looks like it is coming soon. We also just saw our first leaked screenshots of what interacting with the HomePod will look like from an iPhone. These come courtesy of website iGeneration. To translate these, I shamelessly use Google Translate to bring it from French to English. I know it's not gonna be perfect, I'm sorry, but roughly these options here translate to detect Siri, press to speak Siri, light when in use, and sound when using. I'm sorry I can't provide a lot of insight on these settings. I took German in high school, so if it was German, I could probably help you out, but I, uh, I'll have to enroll in some French classes in the future. If you speak French, let me know what you think about these or what they exactly mean down below in the comment section. The one that I can make the most sense of is light when in use. It looks like you will have the ability on the HomePod to enable or disable the display on the very top that can show you that cool glowing Siri orb, but that's pretty much all I know for now. Something else to note here is that it looks like this is all taking place inside of the home app. So rather than going to the app store searching for HomePod or Apple releasing a separate standalone HomePod app, you'll probably set it up and do everything through the home app on your device, which is something that I didn't know about before. Moving on from HomePod, I wanna talk a little bit about iOS 11 and the adoption rate because it is not looking that great when compared to iOS 10 a year ago. Right now, 65% of iOS devices are running iOS 11. 28% of devices are running iOS 10, and then 7% of devices are running an earlier version of iOS. Compare this to iOS 10 a year ago, 76% of iOS devices were on iOS 10, between 75 and 76%. Now only 65% of iOS devices are on iOS 11, which is not that great. Now you compare it to something like Android, this is insane, this is so, so good. But if you're just comparing it to a year ago with an older version of iOS, iOS 10, a lot fewer people are on iOS 11 than were on iOS 10 a year ago, which is interesting. And I feel like that's just because iOS 11 has been plagued by issues and glitches and security flaws and bad performance and bad battery life and throttling devices with degraded batteries. There's so much controversy going on this year that I can't blame 28% of people for not updating to iOS 11 yet. I'm starting to think that I'm just really lucky because iOS 11 for me has been incredible. I've loved it since the first day I started using it. I love the way it looks, the way it feels, the way it works on my iPhone 10. I haven't had any serious bugs or glitches affect me but I hear about them all the time. And I know a lot of you will argue with me to the death on this point, but I still think iOS 11 is the best version of iOS ever. Don't get me wrong, I love iOS 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 as well, but I just like iOS 11, I like the state it's in, and I'm so excited to see where it goes in the future. For everybody that has issues, I'm sorry, I hope it gets better. And that's why I don't make iOS 11 as terrible videos or Apple unreleased iOS 11 videos. I've seen those out there, other YouTubers have made them. Seems like everybody has had really different experiences for this piece of software. I don't really know why, but that would probably be a big reason as to why the adoption rate is so low. The reception has been negative overall, even though I really like it. <laughs> Moving on to our last bit of news. In 2018, Apple has pledged to build a new campus somewhere. We don't know where they're gonna build it yet. They haven't announced the exact location. I'm hoping it's like St. Louis because that would be super cool. Middle of the country, I could visit the headquarters on a daily basis. That'd be really neat. But uh, for now, we don't really know, so it could be anywhere. We don't know a lot about this location just yet, but Apple says that initially it's gonna be focused on tech support, like a building that houses tech support representatives, but it could expand to something else in the future. Anyway, that's gonna be all for this episode of Apple News. If you enjoyed it, as always, it does help me out if you take just one second to drop a like down below. And of course, hit subscribe for more videos like this in the future. You can head over to iUpdateOS.com slash merch, buy a t-shirt or hoodie to support the channel. That would be fantastic. For now, I've been Sam. I hope all of you are doing great and I will talk to you in the next one.
It's raining. It's a thunderstorm. Right when I hit record. That's funny.